Hello, deep and wide thinker. In this video, I'm going to reverse engineer a moment of insight sparked by a six word phrase that I came across. I'll walk you through my notes and show how AI helped me connect the dots. So if you want to see how deep thinking really happens behind the scenes with note taking, creativity, and some surprising discoveries, stick around. I think you'll enjoy this video. So we are in Obsidian and we are looking at a single note and we're gonna be in this note for the duration of this video. This is a, a real and raw behind the scenes look at my process of thinking. And this all started with a walk. Every morning, well just about every morning I take a walk for about 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes an hour and 15 minutes. But in this case, I was rereading a book and a chapter in the Bible, Psalm 96. Not necessarily studying, but I was just lingering with a, a verse, which happens to be this verse. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. So I started off the conversation because when I read this verse, this line, but the Lord made the heavens stuck out to me. So I said, this verse is interesting, right? Why specifically mention, but the Lord made the heavens? Why bring that up? when comparing to idols. The, the contrast was, was doing something to me. Idols, worthless, and the Lord made the heavens. Like it just, it, it didn't really make sense to me. And I wanna park here for a moment and pull out some insights. Uh, number one is don't underestimate the power of thinking about one phrase. I know that sometimes it may seem like it's a waste of time to sit with the phrase, but honestly, I, I find a lot of insights and I find a lot of rich intellectual experiences when I am looking at a single phrase and I actually sit with it for a little bit. So you don't always need a whole chapter or a study guide. Just let a single sentence work on you. By the way, each of these insights are links on this page because I wanted to in the graph view have this be the core note, but I wanted to also extract some insights. Now, not every one of these um, nodes right here are insights. There's also some links as well, but I wanted to be able to go back to the source of where did this happen? Where did this type of thinking happen and how was I processing? So uh, that's what we're doing right now. All right. The other thing is uh, and I mentioned before, I was, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of walks, but you should go on long walks every day if you can. I, I rarely have idea breakthroughs sitting still. Hey, before we keep going, I do want to let you know about something that's really cool that I think you will like. So if you're anything like me, ideas, they don't just come and go, right? Sometimes they knock. Sometimes they're loud, sometimes it's a whisper, but keeping track of them and making space for your ideas to breathe and turning scattered thoughts into something meaningful, sometimes that can be overwhelming. The idea mentioned is my way of helping you do just that. It's a simple human-centered approach to collecting and shaping and connecting your ideas, all without drowning in notes or complicated systems. And let me tell you, this isn't about being a knowledge worker, right? It's, it's about being an idea lover, someone who plays with thoughts and explores possibilities and discovers new connections. If that sounds like you, I'd love for you to check out the Idea Mansion Guide. The link is in the description below. All right, so we have ChatGPT's response right here. And the line that, that initially stood out to me in context of why I was asking about this was it's drawing a, a direct line between creation and credibility, right? So this, beca this became kind of like an anchor for me in this conversation. Um, so the, the takeaway for you is to pay attention to anchor phrases. That's what I'm calling them at least. Uh, sometimes the phrase itself doesn't explain everything, like creation equals credibility, but it does organize everything, right? This, this helped me to know what to look for 
end this conversation, almost like a, a scent that I could follow. Creation equals credibility. So that was a, a scent that I could follow. So later on in the conversation, or later on after I was reviewing this, I actually came across uh, the modern analogy that it came up with, which is you're trusting in knockoff watches that don't tell time, but God invented time itself. So that's kind of the analogy that it's that is uh, that it came up with in relation to this verse of but the Lord made the heavens, right? So I had to link that. I had to link that and make it its own note. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, um, but if I ever come back to this note, I'm probably going to be like, "Whoa, that's cool." You don't have to save everything that's your ideas, right? So pay attention to anchor phrases. And then I said, hmm, this makes me wonder. When God does a miracle, is that creating? Is he making something new by making a blind man see? Now, a takeaway for you is wonder is the door that invites new insights. I'm a huge fan of wonder. And asking questions isn't just about getting answers. It's about unlocking something. One question can shift your whole perspective. Now, let me tell you, this question that I asked, um, again, I, I was walking on a trail behind my house uh, when this when this question came up. And I don't think I've ever asked this before which is kind of cool. So it started with a, a single curiosity of what, why, why but the Lord made the heavens? Why is that the mic drop, drop moment? Which led to an anchor of creation and credibility, right? Which led to a question. And this is where that door was opened and we kind of went into a, a whole new direction. Uh, so chat GPT, it went into something that I was, that I, that made me go, whoa, uh, that I've not caught before. And it was this section right here. Creation isn't just about beginnings. It's about bringing order, purpose in life. And so it starts to make the connection between Genesis when God created the earth and when Jesus came to earth and how the act of bringing order purpose in life was in both of these moments blind eye seeing light where there was no darkness a withered hand restored form and function where there was brokenness a storm called order where there was chaos a dead man raised life where there was none so i when i was walking i'm going to scroll down a little bit when i was walking i think i literally said out loud Whoa. When that moment happens for you, when you have that moment of like, whoa, what the heck? I even said it right here. What the heck? I didn't realize the connection from Genesis to the Gospels. And it led to another idea. So here's some things that we want to pull out. The, the one thing that caught my eye and answered my question was the connection from Genesis to the Gospels, which I went ahead and linked that. I feel like there's a, uh, there could be a lot, actually. Genesis, and there's a lot of parallel of Genesis and the Gospels. And I think I want to, as I explore and learn more about the Bible, I can link back to this. And this could even turn into a, a tag. I don't really know, but I'm open to it. And I think I should I should link it. So I linked that. Or I turned it into a note. That's now a room. A room in the mansion. And there's nothing in the room, by the way. Just the door. This is the title, and that is a door. Nothing in the room yet. But it does connect to this idea right here. Um Here's something else. It makes ideas pop 
when you can see patterns across time. And it was especially meaningful for me here. So I came up with this, this new note, which is now a room in the idea mansion that I have, that's titled, look for patterns across time, not just domains. It's like something from basketball can be related to something that's inside of a car, how a car is designed or something. I don't know, I'm making it up. But domains, like just different categories, like we, we can mix and match and cross pollinate. But what about cross pollinating across time? That's what's happening right here, is I'm seeing a connection with the help of ChatGPT of creation, order, and purpose in the beginning, and then when Jesus came. So I was in a state of surprise and awe for about 30 seconds before another thought occurred, which is in another section, I think it's in John, the book of John, or it could be several places. But Jesus says, I only do what I see the Father do. Right? So I had the the surprising connection from Genesis to the Gospels of God doing, God creating and, and, and ordering out of chaos in the beginning, and then Jesus doing the same thing. And, and he even says, I only do what I see the Father do. So he learned from the Father. Like what, what he's doing is, is only what the Father does. And it's almost like there's, there's a dance of thought happening, a back and forth. It's rhythmic and alive in this conversation. So I went ahead and linked surprise and awe because I feel like there's going to be a lot of surprise and awe moments that I can link back to dance of thought. I wrote that down and I don't know why, but I'm drawn to it. These are all little rooms that I've created and I think I'm going to enjoy looking back at these as, you know, my idea mansion grows and things are connected. All right, moving on a little bit here. Um, what stood out to me in GPT's next reply, um, which this is a, <laughs> this is actually kind of cool. I'm going to, a gold vein. I like that. Um, if you see something that you like, that's just a cool phrase, why not link it? Why not make it its own room? A gold vein. I just love that. I linked the insight that I had right here. Uh, that was from the insight that Jesus was doing Genesis type work in the Gospels, which was birthed from a question about creativity and miracles. Like, th this has kind of become my new way of processing and thinking about ideas is through conversation, through dialogue. And there's a flow, a natural flow of, of thought, which that's the going back to the, the dance of thought when you are processing ideas this way. The more that I considered everything that I was thinking about in this, uh, in this conversation, I started to think about this book called The Blue Ocean Shift. And this is my response in that conversation. It reminds me of the Blue Ocean Shift book, which I went ahead and linked that book. Um, but this is, you know, where, where new markets are not created in red water, but in blue water, where no one is found. Except in this case, no one will find the blue water that God creates in, right? That's the whole point of, but the Lord made the heavens. That's, that's the mic drop. That's the moment where... God doesn't have to, to defend himself. He just points to the sky and says, hey, look, everybody, all the other false idols, they don't compare. Um, and, it, and it connected to this book. This is a business book about creating markets, new markets. 
And these insights here that I want to pull out regarding this comment here, this this reply, is that reminds me of, I, I mean, I, I literally typed it out because that's what I was thinking. It reminds me of. But thinking in that reminds me of is one of the best ways to form connections, which I went ahead and made this its own door. Um, this connection, Blue Ocean Shift, <laughs> Actually, speaking of that, it's it actually is a one of those blue water um, connections. Like it's out completely out in left field. A book on creating new markets tied to a psalm in the Bible, and it wasn't AI that brought that up. It was just me walking and processing the ideas that I had been talking with GPT about. GPT definitely wasn't part of this, but it did not come out and say, hey, this reminds me of uh, the Blue Ocean Shift book. Like, I'm the one that read that book. So I, I brought it up. So from your experiences, from the books that you read, you're going to come up with these connections that no one else is probably going to come up with in a way that you come up with them. So... My encouragement to you is don't ignore the random stuff that surfaces. Sometimes the mind brings up exactly what you need, even if it's unexpected. So the, the blue ocean shift helped me connect the dots between God's creative authority and how we're wired to reflect it. Like, we too can create. Uh, and blue water. And blue oceans. There's no need to compete. Anyways. Um, and finally, last thing I want to talk about is the, the, the note title, which is creation equals credibility. Note titles are doors. They're doors that lead to the room. The note is the room in your idea mansion. This note title, creation equals credibility, is, is short and, uh, punchy but it packs a lot it speaks to how excuse me it, it speaks to how god operates and therefore how we're to operate as creatives and honestly it, it could almost turn into a collection eventually All right so more, more than a note title it's it's a whole way of thinking this creation equals credibility i don't need to defend myself let me just create good stuff that's the way god does it he creates amazing things and he lets creation speak for itself let me create good things let me produce and make quality things and let that speak for itself hey if you're still with me thank you so much for hanging out i hope you nerded out just like i did even if you don't believe in the bible but you nerd out about note taking and obsidian stuff and idea making. I'm all about that. Um, and I hope you are too. And I want to know from you, what was the one takeaway for you that you're going to go try with your note making journey? Let me know in the comments.